Um, you've got a particle, and by the way, because we're in kinematics and we're not interested in why this object is moving, like what, what forces are impacting on it, air resistance, that kind of thing. The reason why they say particle so often is to try and get away from, oh, it's an object and the bigger it is, the more resistance it's encountering or the bigger mass it has. The point is, I'm not interested in any of those. So you'll see a particle or a point, they come up over and over again. We're trying to consider a massless, um, um, voluleless object, okay, hence a particle. It's moving according to this equation where x is the displacement from the origin after t seconds from time zero. Okay, so when you think about this, all I'm thinking about is just a function, right? At a given time, I'll know my given displacement. So let's just do some values. When time is zero, my initial condition, where am I? Negative four. So that's not dramatic. What does this mean? The context of the question will usually tell you what this means. Right now, they're just meaning, okay, where are you? They haven't said up, down, left, right. They haven't described the axis. But I am on one side of the origin. I'm going to just call this the negative side. Okay. At time 1, 1 minus 4, that's going to be negative 3. At time 2, when you substitute that in, 2 squared minus 4 is 0. So at this point, after 2 seconds, I pass the origin, right? Because it says there, I relative, my starting point, right, is relative to the origin. Okay, so I started, you know, negative 4 units on the negative, 4 units on the negative side, and now I'm at the origin. Time 3? 5. 5. Very good. So I blow straight past the origin from the negative side to the positive side, or the negative side to the positive side, whichever way you want to think about it. So, there's some information. Now let's have a look at part B. Hence, find the average velocity during the first second. This is so important, I'm actually going to write this out. Um, and you've got a whole bunch of different, so you don't want to confuse them. Average velocity... And by the way, please, please don't skip saying the word or notifying, noting that it's the average velocity, because it's very different to just velocity on its own. We'll talk about that next lesson. Average velocity... Over the first second. Now, this is a bit tricky because what you've got here is this table represents me taking a picture every second and I've got particular instances in time. But where is the first second? Where is it on this table? The, the, the first second is an interval, right? It's an interval of time. It's between, it's the interval of time between zero and one. Do you agree with that? The first second begins at t equals zero. Okay? The first second begins at t equals zero and it lasts for one second. Okay? So over this time, I'm trying to work out the change in displacement over the change of time. That's all I need to worry about. So how far have I traveled in this little space here? I traveled one unit, right? Have I traveled in the positive direction or the negative direction? I've gone in the positive direction, right? This number is bigger than what it was before. So I'm going to the, I'm just going to say to the right, okay? So I'm going to say this is one, that's my change in displacement, you see? Over, what's the change in time again? One. So this is just one, okay? Now, they've said... Well, okay, so my direction is built into this because it's the sign of what I'm talking about, right? If, for example, I went from negative three to negative four, I'd say there'd be a minus sign here, right? Oh. So I would then interpret that negative based on what the question told me. Here they haven't said left or right or anything, so I'm just gonna have to say the negative direction, okay? Now, one last thing, they've actually provided us units of displacement and units of time in the question. What are they? Meters and seconds. Meters and seconds. Very good. One meter per second, that's my average velocity over the first second. Okay. All right, uh, the first two seconds, again, I'm going to write it down. Average velocity over first two seconds. Okay, so this time, have a look again on my diagram, right? This is my first second, but my first two seconds have to go all the way over this interval. Do you see that? Starts at t equals zero and it ends at t equals two. So I go over the same kind of process, right? How far have I traveled in this time here? 
four meters in the positive direction. So I'm just going to write positive four. And how long did it take me? What was the change of time? Two seconds. So this is not it's not complicated, but the concept is really important to get firm in your mind. Okay. Two meters per second. This is fine. Okay. Um, I'm going to skip over part three because I think you get the idea, but I want to go right to part four. It says during the third second, the third second. Where is the third second? Yeah, very good. So this is the first second. This is the second one. So that makes this the third one. I mean, because of the values on the table, that's all I can do now, right? So this is the third Second, the language here is so important because third second is very easy to confuse with time equals three, right? But time equals three is an instant. Time equals three is the end of the third second, right? Does that make sense? So now when I say average velocity over third second, how far do I travel? How far do I travel? Five. Yeah, five meters. I'm still going in the um, positive direction, so I go five. And it takes me one second to do that. Right. Does that all make sense? Okay. Part C. Sketch the displacement time graph. You can draw this. You can draw this. We, we can do this so easily. We'll do it all together. Um, I'm going to draw it like this. Okay. <clears throat> T squared minus 4. T squared minus 4. You'll notice, by the way, I've only drawn the positive side of my time axis. Why is that? Because time has been defined here as t seconds after time zero, right? Now, if they said t seconds after nine o'clock or t seconds after the first of t, t days after the first of January, whatever it is, in those cases, negative time has a meaning. It's like, ah, oh, it's not nine o'clock, it's 8.59, yeah? Or it was December 31st or etc. okay? But here, it's like time zero. That's it. That's your beginning, okay? So that's why I've only drawn this part. And as I mentioned before, the vertical axis is your displacement, which is x. What's this thing look like? What's this thing look like? This is just a parabola. And it has a vertical intercept. I would have said y-intercept, but it's not a y-intercept. It's a vertical intercept of negative 4, so in the negative direction. Where do I pass by the origin? At time equals 2, there I am. Now, this is so important. This is, again, this is a confusing idea, just like the fact that this is the x-axis rather than the y-axis. I would say, the language I'll use to describe this is, at time equals two, I'm at the origin. Now that's weird, because normally we would say, that's the origin, right? Does that, that's usually what we'd say. But here, that's at time zero, displacement zero. I'm never actually there. Right? At time zero, I'm not at x equals zero. I can't possibly be. I only get to x equals zero, no displacement, at time two. So I would say at that point, at this time rather, I am at the origin. Okay? In fact, any time, like instead of saying a root or an x-intercept, I'm going to say when I pass the origin. That's any time I cut through this t-axis, that's when x is equal to zero. Okay? So please don't confuse. The x-axis means something different in this scheme. And the origin means something quite different in this scheme. Okay? Alright, now, I'm going to pause there. Um, I'll write up some questions for 3a in a second. This idea of average speed, average velocity, the only difference between them is, when you think about um, distance, right? Let's, um, let's take this graph and let's suppose it... Um, it curved back down to here. Let's suppose it was um, symmetrical like that, okay? And I ended at uh, negative four, again, there, okay? Let's think about this for a second. Uh, suppose, let's put a time on this. So that looks like two, let's call that four, so, I don't know, six seconds, okay? For example, that it takes me to get back to the beginning, okay? If it takes me, if it takes me six seconds to get back, right? Let's think about what we already know, which is displacement versus time. Okay. What's my displacement in comparison to where I began? Zero. It's zero. I've ended back at negative four, so that's my starting point. Displacement zero. Average velocity over these six seconds is zero. 
all of these velocities are all positive, okay? But if I start looking at this second half of the journey, I'm gonna get negative velocities, you average it all out, and it all comes out in the wash, zero. Okay? But what about the distance that I've traveled, okay? Well, you've gone away from your starting point, up to somewhere, let's just call this for the sake of interest, let's call that two, and then you've come back, right? Now just look at this for a second. What length have you traveled? You've gone in the positive direction for half of your journey. That's six meters on this scheme. Yes, six meters. And then at a certain point you turn around and you go another six meters in the negative direction. But this guy doesn't care which direction you're going in, whether it's positive or negative. You've gone, you've traveled a total, an actual length. So therefore you've got six here and you've got six here. So your total length traveled is 12 meters. How long did it take you to do that? Six seconds. So your speed would have been two meters per second, your average speed, I should have said, right? But your velocity, your average velocity is zero, okay? 